Uh, it is my great pleasure to attend this、uh, meeting. <laughs> you very much invited me.、Uh, in this presentation, I talk about、uh, the polar wind that is most traditional、uh, outflow mechanism.、Uh, the polar wind is、uh, the Thermal plasma outflow with low temperature and small bulk velocity.、Uh, thus,、uh, it is difficult to detect the polar wind ions in t e n u s plasma owing to positive spacecraft charging.、Uh, the driving force is thought to be、uh, an ambipolar electric field and pressure gradient of ions. Since、uh, electrons are lighter than uh, ions, uh, But uh, the, uh, to maintain charge neutrality, the amipolar electric d e v e l o p between the electron and ions.、Uh, additionally, solar EUV radiation onto the ionosphere produce、uh, photoelectrons that have energy of order of、uh, several tens of electron volts、uh, that can escape along the open field line. And,、uh, So, it is suggested that、uh, the、uh, larger ambipolar electric field developed by these photoelectrons.、Uh, it is an electron density profile、uh, in the polar cap in sunlit and under dark conditions.、Uh, the、uh, density profile and the density itself have、uh, shown very different.、Uh, So, solar radiation strongly affects the electron density profile in the polar cap. This likely corresponds to the density profile of the polar wind. So, this fact is consistent with the importance of photoelectrons.、Uh, uh, theoretical models developed by Wilson et al. and Su et al.、Uh, indicate that uh, the, uh, there are an abrupt p d l i n e potential drop at About 7 RE.、Uh, this is ion density, this is ion velocity, and this is electric potential. Oh,、uh, this is 2 RE, and this is 4, and this is 6, and this is 8 RE. <laughs> uh, so it is about 7 RE.、Uh, uh, and the total potential drop was about 60 EV,、uh, 60 volt. And ions are accelerated at the potential drop.、Uh, if, uh, uh, so, uh, if such a potential drop、uh, exists,、uh, at first, thermal electrons and low energy photoelectrons are reflected and cannot escape owing to the potential drop. Only, only the high energy component of photoelectrons can overcome the potential drop and escape.、Uh, fluxes of high energy photoelectrons and those of polar wind ions should be balanced under zero net field l i n e current condition. So,、uh, fluxes of low energy ions、uh, in the polar cap can be estimated on the basis of the observations of this high energy component of photoelectrons. Uh, this is an、uh, observation by D2 satellite.、Uh, this panel shows downgoing electrons, and this panel shows upgoing electrons. This is a photoelectron. And、uh, precipitating low energy electrons in the lost cone under sunlit condition are detected. This indicates、uh, photoelectrons are deflected above the satellite. However,、uh, The occurrence frequency of the field aligned potential drop,、uh, typical magnitude of the field aligned potential drop, and typical net escaping flux of photoelectrons that correspond to flux of the polar ions are not clear.、Uh, to understand the polar wind system with photoelectrons and to address the controlling mechanism of the polar wind, we assess quantitatively the potential drop at high altitude. Using reflected photoelectrons as a proxy. We examine statistical characteristics of the photoelectron flows in the polar cap using long term data set obtained by the first satellite. 
the apogee of first satellite was about 4,000 km altitude. So uh, the altitude is、uh, far lower than the、uh, potential drop suggested by the modeling studies.、Uh, the first satellite measures、uh, down to about five electron volts.、Uh, uh, electrons、uh, measure five, down to about five electron volts before June. Uh, 2002 and uh, about down to four electron volt after June 2002.、Uh, field and current densities are estimated using magnetic field data. Data were averaged over five second intervals.、Uh, we selected data in the polar cap using uh, uh, low energy ion data.、Uh, lack of low energy、uh, ion in this energy range. Is a definition of the polar wind,、uh, polar cap. And I further、uh, selected data、uh, that the footprint of the、uh, magnetic field line is the solar,、uh, solar thin angle of、uh, the footprint of the magnetic field line is smaller than 90 degrees. And to avoid negative spacecraft charging, the data above 3,000 km are used this analysis.、Uh, and the、uh, Current density is smaller than、uh, 0.16 microampere per square meters are selected. This value corresponds to、uh, 10 to the 8th electrons per square centimeter per second、uh, if all currents are、uh, carried by electrons. We selected 52 months when the apogee was above the sunlit polar cap for most of the time. Uh, since the setting of the uh, uh, electron instrument has slightly changed, we divided the data set into two groups.、Uh, the first group includes、uh, solar minimum to solar maximum, and the second group includes、uh, declining phase of the、uh, solar activity. And、uh, it covers、uh, about one solar cycle. This is a typical、uh, example. Of the、uh, data ob obtained by the first satellite. This is ion data and this is electron data. And this panel shows、uh, this panel show,、uh, close up on the low energy part of the、uh, electron data and、uh, only in the upward loss cone. This panel shows、uh, data in downward loss cone. This is upgoing photoelectron.、Uh, this is、uh, precipitating low energy electrons and it is. Uh, clear that,、uh, that have uh, upper limit. Next, we show、uh, this interval in more detail. This panel shows the pitch angle and、uh, energy spectrogram. The color shows differential energy flux.、Uh, this is upward direction. So,、uh, this is、uh, upgoing photoelectrons produced、uh, in the ionosphere.、Uh, This is a p r e c i p i t a t i n g component.、Uh, a peak at、uh, 20 electron volt exists both upward and downward direction. And downgoing electrons have mirrored、uh, distribution of the upgoing electron below,、uh, in this case, the energy of 25 electron volt.、Uh, this pitch angle、uh, and energy dependence of the distribution function is consistent with the idea that the downgoing. Downgoing electrons are reflected by a static feed aligned potential drop, in this case,、uh, about 25 volts.、Uh, we defined、uh, the magnitude of the potential drop using the、uh, ratio between the、uh, upward and downward、uh, energy spectra in the loss cone.、Uh, The maximum energy at which the ratio,、uh, this is a ratio between、uh, upgoing and、uh, downgoing,、uh, drops below 0.5 as scanned from lower to higher energy pins.、Uh, in this case,、uh, the magnitude was、uh, defined as 26 volt. This is the result.、Uh, This, these panels show the magnitude of feed aligned potential drop and、uh, KP index. 
in different solar activity range. Uh, median of the, uh, the, the point indicate median and error bar indicate quartile. Uh, medians of the magnitude of uh, uh, the field and potential drop are larger than about 10 volt, uh, except for periods of large KP. So the feed and potential drop exist frequently. This is a most important point of uh, our result. Next, we focus on geomantic activity dependence. Uh, the magnitude of feed and potential drop tends to be decrease with increasing geomantic activity, except for the periods of uh, low KP near solar minima. Next uh, panel shows the uh, relation between net escaping electron number flux and KP index. Uh, the net escaping electron number flux that indicate ion flux in the polar cap tends to increase with increasing geometric activity, except for periods of uh, low KP near solar minima. Lastly, we show uh, special uh, extreme example uh, of uh, the data. Uh, in this case, is uh, during a large geomagnetic storms uh, with minimum symmetry of minus uh, 320 nanotesla. Uh, this is ion data, and this is electron, and uh, this is up, upper drop con electron, low energy electron, and uh, uh, this is down going electron. This is the ratio. Uh, the ratio is very low, even at the lowest energy beam. So in this case, uh, the magnitude of the potential drop was almost always below about 6 EB in the polar cap. It is main phase of the uh, of a uh, very large stone. This, is, this panel shows the uh, net escaping electron number flux. Uh, net escaping electron number flux uh, is uh, about 8 times 10 to the 8th at uh, 1,000 km altitude. That are comparable to fluxes of observed by the polar satellite almost simultaneously at about 30,000 km altitude. Uh, in our analysis, uh, the uh, field aligned potential drop exists frequently. Uh, this schematic diagram shows uh, what happens uh, the uh, field aligned potential drop exists. Uh, since the uh, net escaping flux and uh, potential drop, magnitude of the potential drop has negative correlation, since if the potential are large, uh, most of the electrons are reflected, so small amount of electrons can escape. While uh, the potential is small, uh, uh, the, uh, most of the electrons can escape, so this uh, has negative correlation. Uh, on the other hand, the potential drop and uh, magnitude uh, amount of uh, low energy hot electrons that are trapped is, uh, has positive correlation. Uh, since larger potential drop reflect larger amount of photoelectrons. And uh, larger, uh, the precipitating photoelectrons would heat uh, thermal ions. And uh, temperature increase in thermal electrons would increase the strength of the bipolar electric field in traditional way. And the polar wind ions and uh, high energy photoelectrons flux of polarized ions and high energy photoelectrons should be equal. So this, ha this is a positive correlation. So uh, this negative correlation brought uh, negative feedback. A feed and potential drop at high altitude would provide a polar wind system regulated by a negative feedback loop. The most appropriate balance for polar wind ions would be achieved somehow near the uh, median of the magnitude of the potential drop. 
Next, we discuss about genetic activity dependence. The net escaping electron number flux that correspond to ion flux in the polar cap increases with increasing genetic activity. On the other hand, the magnitude of the field ion potential drop decreases. Uh, since the driving force of the polar wind, uh, that is, field ion uh, potential drop, uh, becomes weak during genetically active periods. Uh, the uh, additional ion flux would be supplied by other processes. One of the most uh, probable candidate is the cleft ion fountain. Uh, there is a period of southward interplanetary magnetic field and uh, enhanced two-cell convection. Large amount of ion, upflowing ions, come into the polar cap. So this uh, day-side outflow would provide additional ion flux in the polar cap. Uh, the net escaping electron number flux increases with increasing geometric activity except for low solar activity periods. Uh, observations by cluster spacecraft, uh, oxygen ion observation by cluster spacecraft indicate that uh, the, the oxygen ions likely supplied by the cleft ion fountain are frequently <coughs> detected in the low region during geometric storms, but uh, the, uh, near the solar minimum, the uh, detection frequency of the detection is small. This is uh, consistent with uh, the, uh, our photoelectron measurements. This is a schematic of uh, quiet time and uh, active periods. In the active period, uh, the ion flux in the polar cap would uh, become a sum of the uh, polar wind and uh, the cleft ion fountain. The magnitude of the field aligned potential drop should decrease to match the net escaping electron number flux well with uh, the increased number flux of ions. Uh, we investigated the characteristics of uh, photoelectrons in the polar cap using the data obtained by the first satellite. Uh, typical magnitude of the field ion potential drop are uh, about uh, 10 to 25 volts, except for geometrically strongly disturbed periods. A uh, field ion potential drop uh, exists frequently above the sunlit polar cap. The field aligned potential drop would provide a polar wind system regulated by a negative feedback. The most appropriate balance for, more, uh, for polar wind ions would be achieved somehow near the median of the magnitude of the potential drop. The magnitude of the, poten the field aligned potential drop decreases with increasing geometric activity, while the net escaping electron number flux uh, increases. The above genetic activity dependence is not significant under quiet and moderate genetic conditions near solar minimum. Since the driving force of the polar wind, a uh, field aligned electric field, becomes weak during genetically active periods, the additional ion flux would be supplied by the cleft ion fountain. Uh, Uh, lastly, I talk about uh, outstanding questions. Uh, the, uh, one important remaining problem is location uh, and altitude and shape of the potential drop. Uh, does an abrupt potential drop, which was modeled by Wilson et al. and Sue et al. exist at several RE? Uh, and the effect of ion acceleration on ion supply to the magnetosphere and ion loss is also become a uh, problem. Uh, how strongly does the potential drop affect oxygen ion supply to the magnetosphere? Since the magnitude of the potential drop usually larger than uh, escape energy of oxygen ion. So if the oxygen ions can reach the potential drop, uh, it should be escaped by the acceleration of this potential drop. And it also affects the uh, Hydrogen ion, since uh, and the, the trajectory of uh, hydrogen ions would uh, be changed. Uh, for example, 25 hydrogen ion 
with energy of 25 electron volt has velocity of about 70 kilometers per second. So this acceleration would uh, increase the loss, direct loss along the field line down tail. Uh, significance of reflected photoelectrons on electron heating in the ionosphere will be also important. Since uh, the reflected electrons are precipitated back into the polar cap, so uh, it heats the ionosphere. And uh, if the, ten the temperature of ionosphere increase, scale height of oxygen ion would be increased. So this significance will be studied in the future. Future and uh, the role of the limiting flux of hydrogen ions uh, that was suggested by modeling studies uh, in, the, in this polar in the system is be is be will be important since uh, in my speculation uh, the uh, this limiting flux may be uh, determine the uh, flux of ions and. Uh, once flux of ions are determined, uh, uh, the amount of uh, electrons that can escape is determined. So uh, to match the uh, ion flux and uh, electron flux, uh, the potential drop ha are determined. And uh, so uh, this, it, this is uh, in my opinion, and uh, it should be studied in the future. That's all. Thank you. I'm always, I'm always struck by this study with the strong analogy between or the Earth as a charged object in sunlight. <laughs> Any um, comments or questions? Thanks. I thought that was very nice. Um, one thing I would say is that in the models with the potential drop, you know, from Wilson and from Sue, um, I think that those locations and the shape of the potential drop was put in by, by hand. So the potential drop may not be abrupt. It may be, you know, more gradual. Um, but also, I would say that at least in the models that include photoelectrons in the outflow, a lot of times it, the photoelectrons aren't giving a very strong flux, but it is changing the scale height, which I think is consistent with this um, picture that you that you put out. So on Alex's point of whether or not the, the drop is abrupt, there, there are a couple other studies that were done by Abdullah Barakat showing that if you had two different populations of electrons, one very hot and one very cold, you can actually get a double layer as a type of contact continuity between them. But in order for that theory to work, you would, you would have a polar rain population coming in. So you would have a potential drop and reflected photoelectrons going down but your hot population on the other side of that double layer would also be providing a polar rain flux in. So in that situation, the net escaping photoelectron flux isn't necessarily equal to the net escaping ion flux because it's partially balanced by a polar rain flux coming in. So my question to you is, do you see polar rain, like 100 uh, dB electrons associated with these potential drops. Yeah, yes, uh, actually the uh, net escaping electron number flux includes the uh, contribution of the polar rain. But I uh, checked that uh, precipitating component number flux is not so large compared to the uh, uh, photoelectron. So the con number flux, since uh, although energy is high, but number flux is not uh, comparable to the photoelectron. I wanted to point out a, a one sec. Natoshi, I want to point out a paper by uh, George Kazanoff and others, including myself, in which the, um, the ambipolar potential was derived. And it seems that it becomes rather flat. You know, it's as large as the escape energy for oxygen. A lot of the time you've shown that, but there's still a, a uh, couple of volts or some small, much smaller amount that's keeping the oxygen at low altitude and from which it needs to, still needs to escape even though it's going to fall downhill <laughs> once it does escape. Mike? 
Yeah. I, it, on the point of the polar rain. Oh, I throw that paper too. <laughs> yeah, I got one. On the point of the polar rain, just back to your plots, you should be able to see it in the precipitating plots. None of the plots you showed had polar rain coming down in any of your uh, case study, you know, individual orbit plots that I could see. Yeah, there. The precipitating thing in the polar cap, you would have like expected to see. Well, in the other plot, that oh, yeah. the next one up, the right. yeah, it would have been there. It's not there at all. So, it, it, do you ever see it? I guess is the question. And is it in? It, do you systematically remove that from your uh, statistical analysis, or is that just included uh, in your? No, uh, we do not uh, remove uh, the uh, polar rain component. But uh, the, in most of the case, uh, this is far lower than the uh, 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 far lo uh, the number flux is far lower than the photoelectron flux. So I think it, that is negligible, and uh, we checked about it. Um, I'll talk about this briefly in my presentations, but Abdallah and I did careful studies, 3D time-dependent simulations, and we put in um, <coughs> the polar rain, and we calculated, talking to the experimentalist, what the densities are. You have cold electrons coming up, and then you got the polar rain, hot electrons sitting above, and it's a pressure balance. It's the density times the temperature. And indeed, you can get a, you can get the, um, you could get a du sharp double layer, or you can get a more smooth distribution, but the layer is typically above 3,800 kilometers. Okay, it's at higher altitudes, and when you have the polar wind density at low varying, uh, at lower altitudes varying, that level where the two plasmas can't interact e with each other, you know, a hot population of electrons can't penetrate the cold ones, and vice versa, if the pressure balance is the same. So you actually get a pressure balance between the two, and that determines where the polar rain stops coming in and where the cold um, hits the layer and comes back down. And you've got an electric field that can be narrowly focused, and the ions are accelerated out. Okay? It's an upward electric field that returns the, um, the photoelectrons and the thermal electrons down, and then that accelerates the ions up. And so those calculations, some of them you said should be done, have already been done and it's in the literature. Uh, I think that uh, the precipitating component of photo, uh, polar rain would be accelerated downward by this potential drop, the direction. Two electron populations cannot penetrate each other easily. And what the difference is, it's a, we, we, we solved it rigorously. We took a hot population with the polar rain temperature and, we, and the polar rain densities. We worked with the experimentalists to get them. We put them in the model, and then we had the polar wind electrons coming up, and we solved it together. And the two populations don't penetrate each other. The cold electrons are returned. The ions are accelerated up. And the, where that occurs moves up and down depending on the pressure in the ionosphere. And we have a paper on that that shows that carefully. Those calculations were done quite a while ago, uh, before the two references that you had on, the, on your slide. I could give you the reference. Bob? Following up on uh, Bob's question, maybe there's a, a misunderstanding about what people mean by a double layer. A lot of people think of a double layer as being a monotonic electric field, two layers of charge. Which I think in this picture, you must have two, layer, two directions of electric field with a net potential drop across them that accelerates the ions out and turns the photoelectrons back, but also has a, an electric field that, in fact, turns the, precipitate, the precipitating electrons around as well. So in that sense, is that, is that what that double layer means? It's really two opposing electric fields that have a net potential across them. So you've got to have something that turns those those. Yeah. I could put it in my talk, but I already.
already got, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I can put in my talk, but I already got too much. But we solved it rigorously together, got the it. two populations together, and you get the ions accelerated up, and you get the cold electrons returned, just like you see in the measurements. And where that, that occurs depends on the pressure in the ionosphere. So as the polar wind is changing its density and temperature, uh, we got nice plots to show that that thing is moving up and down in altitude. But two electron populations cannot penetrate okay. each other easily. All right. I also have a, qu a question that maybe other future direction is there's another source of precipitating electrons, which is the strahl. So you would see, an, you might see an interesting B, IMF BX dependence on, on this thing that you usually see the strahl only go in one hemisphere and not the other, depending on the polarity of the BX. I just want to comment that I, th I think you guys are getting sort of uh, focused on the uh, high altitude double layer and missing one of the points that I want to emphasize, which is Naratoshi made it very nicely. He said very, very strong active storm conditions, the potential drops to below 5 volts, right? Yes, uh, in the large storms, uh, the potential drop and he made uh, the disappeared. Point that that's, that's because there's so much ion outflow that you no longer need that potential to hold back the electrons. The ion, plenty of ions to go out with the electrons and keep the Earth neutral. And I think that basically proves that when you have really big outflows for storm conditions, they're driven by processes other than the normal polar wind process, meaning type 2 heating of the ions rather than type 1 heating of the electrons. 